Very hyped to welcome back to the podcast, my friend, the producer of 51 Strokes and the Macro Dosing Pod at Barstool Sports, huge Ranger fan, season ticket holder, Avery Zareski. What's going on, brother? What's up, Johnny? It's good to be back. I'm so happy to be back on this podcast. So happy to talk Rangers. I have so much on my mind. Let's get into it, man. Let's just let's just rock. Let's go. Yeah, dude. Last time you came on, it was kind of like forced conversation because the Rangers were not in the playoffs. And I was like literally just trying to make any kind of question I could come up with. But, um, you know, I know you had high expectations and you were really excited for this season. I know we're only like four games in, but has your excitement matched to, you know, what the Rangers are doing right now? Or are you kind of disappointed or what's going on? I feel great. This team, the team looks good. Obviously, the last game, the second period wasn't great, but everything other than that has been pretty spot on. The, the first game of the season kind of sucked. But I knew that it's just growing pains. Like you have mm-hmm. a new coach, you have a new system, and you have all these guys who, besides the top six, have never played together before. So it, it, it was, it's just growing pains, man. And they're already showing signs that they could be a very, very good team. You got to realize that um, the top six is solidified and the bottom six is going to need work. It's good. They're going to need reps. But when they get those reps, I think we're going to have a really good team. And, and then you just look at Igor Shosturkin and you look at Adam Fox two guys adam fox might win norris again this uh this year and i think igor is gonna put <laughs> together a pretty good case for vesna <laughs> man I, I it's so early and this could end up being a bad take but he is so good like i mm. really think he can put together a good case to to be a vesna candidate at the end of the year yeah i mean he's done it so far and something that i i do want to rewind a little bit back to like the opening night i went to my first ever home opener for the rangers i know you've probably been to a bunch but for me i was kind of like taken back a little bit about how empty the building felt but did you feel that way at all or no um i don't know i don't know if that's because of what was was going on off the ice and all the things and like you kind of just have that in the back of your head i Mm -hmm. I, for me um for because i've been going the garden so long and because like i I have all all these built-up relationships with the garden the opening night is almost like a homecoming for me because Uh i'm so like wrapped up and talking to all the security guards i know and all the workers that I've that I've known literally they they know me since I'm like a baby so uh opening night is more of just me just trying to like reestablish like hey I'm still alive like hey guys it's me <laughs> but then the game part of it um you could tell uh, it was a little different feel maybe just because you know COVID happened and then th- th- this is all it, it all kind of starts to feel like this isn't new but mm-hmm. then again, it's just been a year since we've experienced it. So I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I thought it was pretty good. I, I miss I, I really miss the gardens. So it was good to be back with a full crowd. Yeah, dude, I couldn't agree more. That, that was my first time in the garden probably since like December 2019. So it felt great to be there. I just I guess for me, like growing up, you know, I remember watching like the home openers and thinking how loud it was and how crowded it was. And, you know, usually the Rangers score in like the first five minutes in the home opener. And this, you know, this year they scored in like you know, halfway through the game. But um, for me, I just, I don't know, maybe I just had higher expectations and didn't necessarily disappoint me, but definitely a little surprised with the ovation. And especially also with, with uh, Adam, I thought there'd be like a ceremony before the game, but I guess like the Roger bear thing kind of, you know, played into that a little bit. Yeah. They did a little thing for him. I think in between maybe the first Mm -hmm. period uh, and then they kind of showed him and he did, they did their stick taps. Uh, Hopefully they'll, they'll give him a little bit more, but I I think it's, I think sometimes like the best things are unsaid, like you just watch him every night and you're like, well, this is our Norse trophy winner. Like he's still just that good. Um, So he he's the best man. I love watching him. He's He's awesome. Has has anyone else impressed you thus far aside from Shesterkin and Fox, obviously, because those have been the two, uh, you know, standouts. Um, I think obviously he's hurt right now, but the growth of Capo Caco, he just, uh, he, he just says he, he came in and he didn't look great. He looked good, but you could tell that there was potential there, but he looked a little bit in a shell you know, of himself, you know, and he was mm-hmm. kind of um, fr- from the world juniors. He was definitely uh, not looking like what he did at the world juniors. So we were, I was a little nervous, but at the end of the day, I was like, the kid is 18 years old. Like he's going to grow into this game. He's such a big player. He's such a good skater. He's very smart in the offensive zone. And it, start, it was starting to show until obviously he got that injury. But man, if he can just, he, he could just keep going and get better. He'll, he'll look so good with Panarin, man. Panarin makes anybody look good. And if you're like an elite level talent with Panarin, it's just going to make for a one-two duo that's going to be hard to beat in any aspect of the ice. So let me ask you the other side of the question. Who's disappointed you the most? 
the Ooh. first four games. That's I feel like the obvious play. answer is Georgiev, but that's like, uh, you know. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit too early. Uh, I guess you could say Barclay Goudreau, but I don't know hmm. really how much to expect out of the guy. Um, he, Like I said, new system, new players. So I think – you, you look at guys like Barclay Goudreau and Sammy Blay, like they're going to have like either uh, okay or good seasons or maybe even bad, maybe even like, you know, you were like, oh, wow, like they didn't do anything. But mm -hmm. these guys are the guys who are built for the playoffs. You don't expect them to do that much in the regular season. But when the playoffs come around, when the Rangers are in the playoffs, these guys are built different. Like these guys are built to go the extra, you know, however many games in the first round, however many games in the second round, like these guys have won Stanley cups. They know what they're doing. So I, I have, I'm full confidence that no matter what happens this season, if we get in the playoffs, these are going to be the guys who are going to step up for, for the guys who we haven't had step up in the previous years. Mm -hmm. I gotta give a shout out to your brother. I think Ethan Zaretsky, he just commented. On the, oh, your cousin. He just commented yeah. on the post. His name just popped up on my phone. So I'll give uh -huh. Ethan a shout out. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I don't think I did, but Good. just in case, um, yeah. So what about, I got to ask you about one guy, Chris Kreider. I thought he was for sure captain. I know, obviously, we both know they named six assistants. I think by the end of the year, he has the C on his jersey. Do you agree, disagree? Yeah, I think um, the C, the the C, the captain uh, topic has been really weird. I don't know what it is. I don't know why they don't have one. But at the same time, I do. Like, it's, you know, there's not really a true captain identity I hate the assumptions that are made around the captaincy because mm -hmm. you don't know what goes on off the ice uh, as someone who's played hockey. And I know you too, there's so much different, like there's like the team looks so different off the ice than it does on the ice. Like you just don't know who's leading that locker room. You don't know who's doing what, but I can tell you this, man, Chris Kreider would look really good with that C on his chest. He's got, you know, six more years on his deal. He's, he's a hell of a competitor. He'll go into the corners. He'll fight. He'll get in front of the net. Like he's everything that Ryan Callahan was to the Rangers mm -hmm. uh, as a forward. So I, I, I agree with that. I think he, he would be a perfect fit. Mika Zibanejad too is another guy who would be a great fit. You know, he's, he just signed a long-term deal. So whoever it is and, and however it works out, I'm excited for whoever gets that letter on their chest. But I, I do agree that Chris Kreider is probably the best fit for this team. Absolutely. But do you think it happens this season or you think they go the whole year with the six alternates? Because I think it's just going to like form into its own where it's going to have to happen. I think, yeah, it's, it's such a, it's such a go, you know, it's, it's like a weird thing. Cause you, like, you mm -hmm. start the season without one. It's like, when do we really bring it in? But my thing is, is maybe like right before the playoffs, it's like, if you slap a C on Kreider's chest, it's like, all right, like we're going into war. Like we need, here's our captain. Like, let's go. Like, I think that would, that would fire up the room. I agree. Maybe right towards the end of the season where they're like, you know, they're looking for like that, that, that leader, that someone who's like going to push them to like make it over that, that the hump that they've been trying to get over for years. And I think that it makes sense. He's the most tenured guy in the locker room, Chris Kreider. That would be really awesome if he got to see. Well, I want to tell you my theory and thank God we're recording this because I will be posting this on that day just in case it does happen. But All right. I think Henrik Lundqvist on his retirement night hands out the C to whoever is named captain. If that happens, I think that'd be cool. sick. I think that'd be so sick. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be an emotional night, man. Yeah. I I assume you're going. I mean I was at I was yeah. at uh what was it Leech night when they announced there that there would be a Graves night. So I yeah. think it'd be something similar to that. It was just like so cool and such an awesome moment. Yeah, I I told my dad, I was like, we're not selling the tickets over yeah. my dead body. I will be at that <laughs> game. That's like my idol. That's someone who I've looked up to my entire life. I will not miss that that game and that night. That, that will be something that I'll be able to tell my kids about uh, and their grandkids too. So I, uh, I I think that would be so cool if he just handed out the C, but who mm -hmm. knows? Who, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I can't. I can't make assumptions yet, but uh, it would be really, really cool. That's a really good. Um, that's a really good thing. Yeah. To think about for sure. Yeah. So I guess speaking of Hank, while we're on the topic, have you been able to watch him uh, on the network yet in between periods? Or I know you're traveling. You're so busy. I don't know if you've been oh, able to watch. He's so good. Like I, I feel like we're just gonna lose him. Like their TNT is gonna hire him or something. Like he is just he's so sound. Like it's like he. You know, you got guys like um, like we'll go to football, like Jason Witten. They kind of just threw him in there mm -hmm. and he wasn't good. And you're, you're scared to throw these guys in these situations. because You don't know how they'll do. You don't know how to affect their image. And they threw Henrik Lundqvist into this position. And he's just so good. Like, 
I really think he's going to be like the next face of like hockey, hockey media. I think mm-hmm. within a year or two, they'll bring him into TNT. They'll bring him in with the big guns, ESPN. And he's just going to, he, he's a star. He's been a star at every aspect of his, of his career, of his, you know, like, look at the guy. He's just, he, he's just a handsome dude. He's just a mm-hmm. really handsome dude who is just everywhere he goes, he's glowing. Like he, He's just that when he's in the room, like everybody else is like, all right, let, let the King talk. Well, I love what Valaket. I, I don't know if you heard it or saw the clip, but Valaket was like, I'll play the clip in this honestly right after. But yep. when he was talking about just Sturkins, I think second period against Toronto, he was like, that's the best goaltending I've seen in New York Rangers history. And like, obviously he was just busting Hank's balls. So I love that we have like somewhat of like a locker room dynamic in the you know intermission. Cause we didn't really have that in years past. Yeah, and it's kind of like that same dynamic of like having Wayne Gretzky on TNT where you mm-hmm. have like like one of the greatest like if not the greatest player at his position and uh, talking about all the like giving his perspective. Like right, you got Henrik Lundqvist, the best goaltender in Rangers organization giving his perspective. Like you mm-hmm. would just never think of of hearing that from somebody of that caliber. So it's really cool that he decided that he was going to jump on and give his perspective of of what he sees a in the Rangers and it, and it adds a different level of like, you know, St- Steve Valaket was a backup goalie. Obviously John Gino was is on for a while. Close friend of mine, not to brag. I love, yeah. I love John. Yeah. John, John and I, John's known me like all the people at the garden for a long time. So every time we see each other, we kind of have like a little, little thing going on, but um, he seems like a great guy. Oh, he's the best, but yeah. Henrik Lundqvist uh, pr- gives us something that I don't think we've ever seen before uh from from a rangers uh reporter no no way well i don't know if this is i don't know if you're gonna agree with this i actually i didn't like mark mestier on espn last week i was i didn't hear it i didn't hear it it? no i don't know he to me i mean like i'm not gonna bat who am i to bash mark mestier but like for me he just didn't seem like comfortable up there i don't know i i just i I felt like it wasn't a good fit and i hate saying that because like mark mestier was my idol growing up but Mm -hmm. I, don't know. You, I guess you got to watch next time ESPN's on. He's on there, and, and you got to tell me. But, yeah, I don't know. It just didn't seem – didn't feel right. Yeah, I'll check it out. I, I haven't heard it. I haven't seen it. But um, I actually – someone said something. I was – I forget who I was with, but uh, someone in the office said something about how it wasn't great. But uh, everything else was good. Like, TNT was great. Biz yeah. was great. Gretz mm-hmm. was great. They're all they're, – they, they, they were stars. And uh, I think Charles Barkley really helped them, like – like feel yes. feel more comfortable in that aspect because you could mm-hmm. see when they started off they were a little bit they're obviously a little bit nervous like it's like a new station like they need to do well and then charles came on and everyone was like kind of like free flowing so it's good to see it's really good for hockey and i hope uh i hope they keep adding more more uh high caliber talent like uh henry Lundqvist. yeah i think they will i mean it's only gonna get better and better right like they just started so um it's mm-hmm. obviously gonna get more and more entertaining as we go and I want to bring up, because I think I heard this on Twitter today. You made a bet with Ryan Whitney about Kako scoring 20 goals. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, w- I spent the last week with them. Uh, they were in town for a couple of things. They were doing some streams for, uh, you know, opening night for hockey. They came to see biz and we all watched the first game together. And I was just getting hit, hit left and right. Rangers mm-hmm. suck. This and that Kako sucks. What's he doing? This and that. And, um, it, yeah, it was, it, it just dug into me. And then, um, before, I think it was before the Dallas game. Like, so that, that night it ended, we all, you know, he, they, they're giving me shit and I was just like, ah, whatever, you know, <laughs> and then I, we, we were talking, we were sitting in one of the podcast rooms and he's like, listen, man, he's like, Kako sucks. Like he caco <laughs> horrible. Listen to that. I was like, he, I, he's, he's scoring over 20 goals this year. And, and Grinelli, who said he was going to score over 30, uh looked at me he's like no 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 he's like I think I was wrong I was like no you're not wrong like he scored Mm -hmm. over 20 so then him and I went back and forth and we finally agreed on a a, on a a friendly wager so uh Witt's a great guy love Witt but um nobody talks bad about my Rangers and doesn't get away with it so we'll see what happens he's hurt right now doesn't Mm -hmm. help my case but uh I think he's gonna have a really good year I still do I would have definitely taken that bet also. And I don't know if you know Ryan me, but he would have a heart attack if he heard Whitney talking shit about Capo Caco. Yeah. Yeah. I know he's a big fan of Capo. Yeah. Big Caco guy. But um, Avery, I just want to give you a moment to like plug anything you want. Um, you know, hopefully you'll come back on during the year as we go. 
and I know everyone will see you in the garden at most games. Do you go to every single home game? Not every single home game. It's obviously different now. I travel a lot for work, but mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I was like in high school, I used to for sure. But yeah, I mean, you can always, you know, uh, any if anyone is ever at a game and they see me or they, you know, or they think I might be at a game and they want to meet and chat, just hit me up on Twitter, uh, Avery Zaretsky, Instagram, Avery Zaretsky, you know, follow, follow whatever you guys want. Obviously follow macrodosing 51 strokes. Those are my pages that those will, that's where you'll see most of my activity for sure. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I always talk Rangers on Twitter. If you want to argue with me or agree with me, whatever, <laughs> um, it's always a good time on there. And, and I, listen, I, I say it how it is. I, 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 uh, I keep it a buck. I, I really, I, I'm honest about my Rangers takes and I think I'm, uh, I think I'm the most like optimistic Rangers fan ever. I will never, I hate being caught for bad takes. I hate being the cold take machine. So I always, I always keep it by the book. I'm always like, you know, with all the stuff that with Kravtsov, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, Drury, you know, Drury did the right thing. Like you got to trust our organization, this and that. And I was getting so much hate for it. But at the end of the day, you just got to trust your, your system. That's it. But yeah, yeah. I didn't even ask you about Kravtsov. You think we're getting Dylan Strom? I saw you put up that gift today. I'd love that. I, I've, I've heard some things about Dylan Strom. Obviously it was in the Brooks article, but for, from some of my close people, I have heard things uh, about Dylan Strom. They are, they have inquired about him. I'd really like to see that move being made. I think, I think somebody, somebody hypothesized that to me like two years ago mm -hmm. when he was like still not playing well. And, uh, you know, the Rangers did that thing with Ryan Strom where he was like a high draft pick. They picked him up. Rangers have a really good history of taking high draft picks who didn't, you know, pan out and bring <laughs> yeah. them back and then being good. Like Derek Broussard, mm -hmm. Mika Zibanejad, like guys who just weren't panning out, come to the Rangers and end up being good. So the Kravtsov situation, uh, I'll keep it short, but um, listen, there's just no fit for him on this team. You, you yeah. got a solidified top six that isn't move, going anywhere. That's not moving. And then you want to form a different type of bottom six. That's going to get you through those playoff games. And, and as good of a talent Vitaly Kravtsov could be, there's just no room for the guy. And you look at a, you take a guy like Philip Hedl, right? He wasn't, he, you know, he wasn't performing well at the, at the level that they wanted him to. They sent him down. He came back. He still wasn't performing. He, they sent him down again, and now he's back, and he's, like, in a really good role. He looks great out there. And it's just about knowing, like, your development process. Vitaly mm -hmm. Krasov is 20 years old. Like, he's going to play in the NHL. Like, if he could just realize that, you know, give it a year or two more, you'll be on this team, and you'll have a very a very pivotal role. Like, you, you just got to kind of know your role. And, th mm -hmm. and that's where I think he, his disconnect is. And it's okay. Like, if he wants to play somewhere else, like, we'll trade him. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so tough to do as a player too, though. Once you get a taste of it also, like, you know, he came oh, in last yeah. year and he did well and it's, it's, it's so hard. I mean, I've obviously never done it, but getting sent down to the minors, I imagine is just like literal hell. If you had a taste of the NHL. Yeah. Especially, you know, he's got all his Russian teammate friends, you know, he's got mm -hmm. Panera and he's got Igor, he's got all the guys. And then you, you get like the New York city lifestyle taste. And then you get sent down to Hartford, Connecticut. It's like, it's, it's a whole different world down there. I I've been to a couple of games down there. I, I my buddy, Alex Whalen plays for them. It's, it's just a whole mm -hmm. different world. It's not that it's bad down there. It's just a complete difference. It's like going from, you know, earth to Saturn. It's like, <laughs> like uncharted territory down there. The, you the analogy you landed on was the solar system. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I was just thinking I, anything really. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's good stuff. But Avery, I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you at a game soon. I will always come on this podcast. You know that um, I, know. I love talking Rangers. I will, I will never stop lo uh, loving talking Rangers. So um and yeah well i'll see it again i kind of i guess i kind of dropped the ball you were at opening night and i uh and i was just too caught up in the moment uh, honestly like I said, it, it's, it's homecoming man I, I i see too many people i was shaking hands and giving hugs too it's okay i totally understand it was it was I good to see it was like being the first day of school you know it was good to see yeah, it always is but mm -hmm. now but now you know we'll, we'll go to a game i i gotta i gotta take you to a game and we gotta do it right i love that i love that appreciate it